The e-bike industry has generally been characterized by the use of mid-mounted motors. Relatively recently, Malle managed to revolutionize the industry by introducing highly efficient rear motors for high-performance cycling solutions that are lightweight and interconnected with the rider's biometric data and all the bike's peripherals, allowing a holistic experience perfectly adapted to the needs of the most demanding riders. If you are an e-bike enthusiast, you have surely asked yourself or asking yourself questions such as, could rear motors replace mid-motors in the industry? Are hub drives really reliable systems? Is it the right solution for what I need? Today, we are meeting with industry experts to answer the most common questions. Gioma, Joseba, thank you both for being here. So, Gioma, first of all, and the most important thing, which is the difference between a hub drive system and a mid drive system? The main difference is, is or the, the main characteristic is the position into the bike. The hub drives are located into the, into the wheel, could be front and rear, and the mid drives are located into the bottom bracket area, yes. This is the main difference. And what are the main advantages of each of the systems? The main advantages or the main uh, characteristics of a, of a hub drive uh, are basically that it's totally cadence independent is based or is located into the rear wheel and therefore the power is delivered directly to the wheel and it's not passing through the transmission. This means that it's totally linked to the speed of the bike or the speed of the rider and not linked to the cadence, to the, to the way the rider is pedaling. This gives this independence, is giving freedom to the rider to, uh, to continue pedaling as in a regular bike, uh, even going on, on this type of, of e-bikes. On the other hand, the mid-drives are uh, linked to the, to the cadence and totally independent to the speed, which means that you can get uh, higher power at uh, lower speeds. So when you are in a very, very steep climb, maybe above uh, 15%, in that occasions is when you can get a lot of power coming from the unit, even in lower speeds, and like uh, you can play with the cadence just to get it on when you need it. So, from what you say, I understand that the gear ratio can affect the assistance. For sure, especially on the mid-drives. As the power coming from the, from the drive unit to the wheel is passing through the transmission, it's totally uh, depending on the, on the gear. Uh, on lower gears, the, the power that is arriving to the wheel is, is less than what the motor is delivering. And on the other hand, when you are like, uh, in, in higher gears, it's multiplied by the transmission ratio. Uh, therefore, like uh, for in applications where you are using mainly uh, lower gears, uh, always the power coming from the from a mid drive unit is is reduced. This is not happening on hub drives because hub drives are are delivering directly the power to the wheel, and therefore it's totally independent on the on the gear uh, you are using. How does Orvea choose the system for its e road bicycles? Well, considering there are two main uh, e-bike systems available to beat one e-road uh, or an e-gravel bicycle, there are two different factors to make that decision in between the hub drive unit and the mid drive unit. These factors, what could be? One, for example, is that uh, considering that the speeds on the e-road or e-gravel category are higher than any other category, the hub drive unit is an obvious choice for, for that. Another factor could be the weight. It's a small part than a mid drive unit, so the lower is important to reduce the gap in between the regular road bikes and the e-road bikes. Additionally, the possibility to uh, fine tune the motor uh, map, it's quite important to achieve our target to have a super natural pedaling bicycle system. And uh, finally, the aesthetic. It's pretty important for the road consumers or the gravel consumers that the bicycle looks like a bike uh, because actually it's a bike. So a small size and then on the rear hub, it's perfect to make almost invisible the e-bike system on, on a road bicycle. What could you tell us about the weight? The, the weight is a key in the bike industry, especially for the, for the high-end bikes. Every gram counts. We work it heavily in order to reduce the weight of the drive unit, and we manage it to, to bring to the market the, the lightest uh, drive unit. The weight is, is, uh, is around 1.4 kilos. 
and uh, yeah, and, and working on that was was a key for 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 the teams in order to to reduce the weight that we are having on the on the rear wheel, and therefore the the dynamics. These type of e-bikes are like the same than a than a regular bike. And what about the integration? Uh, when you are reducing the weight, you, you, we also work it to reduce the the package. We wanted to make it invisible. So you can, it's super easy to integrate. This, is, this also applies to, to the rest of the components, so the battery, HMI. So we try to make them super light, easy to integrate, small, so they are uh, becoming invisible on, a, on, on the bike. And, and at the end, no one can, can say that this is an e-bike uh, easily. It's quite difficult to find the motor if you are not used to, to this type of bikes. Uh, you should tell the people, hey, the motor is there. How does Orvea assess the issue of weight and integration? Road cyclists and, and gravel cyclists, they have a high expectations in terms of weight reduction when designing a bicycle like, uh, like our gain. Uh, on one side, having that uh, X20 half unit that is the lightest available on the market is really helping to reduce the overall weight of, uh, of the bicycle, of the gain. And uh, on the other hand, when we face the challenge to design a frame set that uh, will match that engine, uh, we, we have a great opportunity to reduce additionally the weight since there is no need to make any reinforcement on the frame set to accommodate any mid ref unit on it. So it's clear that uh, our gain is reaching that expectation of the uh, road cyclist to, to target a bicycle that uh, it's in around 10.5 kilos thanks to the use of a hub drive uh, unit. Much progress has been made on the subject of drag. What does Urbea take into account in this regard? One of the biggest concerns of the road cyclist, uh, especially because we know that there is a 25 kilometers per hour limitation, is how the bicycle is going to feel when you are under that speed limitation or we are above that speed limitation. So it's pretty important in that case for us to select for our gain the X20 half drive unit because it's almost a frictionless system that uh, you don't feel any friction while pedaling and that in combination to the fact that you are not using a bottom bracket and crack set combination that is natural as a one standard bicycle makes the whole system uh, super efficient in, the, in that drag wise point. So riders, they feel the bicycle uh, dynamics as almost a regular bicycle that really match the expectations when they think that an e-bike should uh, uh, be as a, a regular bike. How did you achieve this at Male? Basically, yeah, the market requirement was very clear. No? Uh, reduce any type of internal friction, especially when the bike is not assisting. And therefore, we work it, uh, heavily on the, on the internals and uh, we increased the size of the bearings which are going inside. Uh, the drive unit, and and also we improved all the clutches and free wheels on the on the system just to achieve this this result. Drag is important for riders, but also the autonomy. What could you say about autonomy? When a cyclist is facing the purchasing on an e-road or e-gravel bicycle, there is no cyclist that is not concerned about uh, how much range this system is going to offer, or how much is the power of the system, and actually the range and the power they are very related. Uh, so that's the reason because we have been working on a motor map that uh, offers a perfect synergy in between the cyclist and the system. That means that uh, the system is only releasing power when the cyclist demands the power. The system works in a perfect synergy. The more power the cyclist demand, the more power the system is releasing. So that not only helps on that natural pedaling, but also reducing the big peaks on battery demand that increase the, the range of the, of the whole system and uh, allows the riders to ride much longer than uh, any other system available in the market. I would say that just underline what Joseba was mentioning, uh, the system is mirroring what the rider is, is, is doing. No? It's, it's like, like amplifying what the, the rider input. And therefore, it's like uh, you have power when you need it, but when you don't need it, motor is totally stopped and therefore saving energy. You know? This way we can manage to, to achieve like, a, like a even 4,000 uh, meters of climb uh, for a rider of, of 70 kilos. And you know that the, the autonomy, the range depends a lot on the, on the type of rider, the type of terrain, uh, weather conditions, if there's wind, I don't know, so many, so many, so many topics involved.
it's a combination. This is what Jose was mentioning. It's a combination between the power, the battery capacity, and the range you can do. Have you taken into account issues such as speed when optimizing the system? Sure. Uh, the, the X20 is specially optimized for these high speed applications. And therefore it has like a, like the best efficiency in, in the speed ranges going from 15 to 25. Where, and in this type of application, like uh, e-road and gravel is where you are, like uh, when you are going assisted is where, where you are staying most of the time. And, and therefore, like, uh, is, is when you are getting the, the best results from, from our system. And this is uh, the result is that you're extending the, the, the range. And what about the range extender on the Urbea game? Even if we have been able to fine tune a system that is uh, allowing the cyclists to, to have a huge range of 4,000 meters of elevation, there are some that probably they are not that fit or they intend to go for long rides on the mountains, they have kind of concern about if the battery is going to last that much. So the perfect solution is to have this uh, range extender that still is able to increase the range of the, of the whole system in around 1,500 extra meters. Joseba, Jama, thank you very much. I think we have solved many of the doubts that most people who are interested in this world may have. And to those who are watching the video, we hope it has been helpful. And as you know, stay tuned for more.